Cheers. Amen, amen, amen. Put your hands together for Jesus on this morning. Welcome, 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 welcome. The 9 o'clock got it, but they, we used to open church back when I was from, said I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And then sometimes we wouldn't get past that. But let's say, I was glad when they said unto me, you finish it. I was what? What did I say? Glad as at nine o'clock. How do you act when you're glad? Let me y'all show me how you act when you're glad. Y'all glad to be here this morning? He didn't have to wake you up. Y'all know that, don't you? And when he woke you up, you didn't have to be in your right mind, but you are. When you went to your car, it didn't have to crank, but it did. You didn't have to have enough money to put gas in it, but you did. So the fact that you are here today, right now, is enough to thank God in this place. Put your hands together for Jesus. Amen. Father God, we thank you for this day. 
God, we thank you for your blessings, God, that you're going to give us on this day. We thank you for your spirit that exudes this very presence right now. God, we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on and put those hands together if you love the Lord. Come on, if you love him and you're not ashamed to show it. Come on, let's put those hands together. We invite you to rise to your feet as we begin to bless his name. Hallelujah, he is worthy.
He's a faithful God. He's a real good God. Yes, he is. You've been better to me than I've been to myself. Hey, yeah. Come on, say you've been better to me. You've been better to me than I've been to myself. Oh, 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 oh. Come on, say you've been better to me. You've been better to me than I've been to myself. You've been real good. So 
good. Woo! My Lord, because when I think about Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, thank God I'm free in Jesus' name. Woo! My Lord, y'all sit down. Sit down before we get stuck right here. been better than me than I've been to myself. My Lord, God from Zion, better than me than I've been to myself. You've been so good. Real good. Still good. My Lord, my Lord, regardless of how you treat him, he's still good. Regardless of how, how bad you are, he's still good. Woo, because he's a good, good father. Woo, that's who you are. Oh, did the spirit drop that? He's a good, good father. No, I can't, can't just maybe 30 seconds. He's a good, good, he's a good, good father. You're a good, good father. Yeah. It's who you are. Yeah. It's who you are. It's who you are. I'm sorry, are. musician. You picked it. Yeah. And now I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. your hand together if you can if you've been blessed by that call six o'clock on Monday morning listen we got some special guests tomorrow and they're summer our own I won't call them out right now uh, but you guys lock on at 6 a.m. in the morning you're going to learn uh, they're going to be giving us the inside game people the inside game so log on to that call in the morning about 30 minutes uh, in the morning looking forward to seeing your faces there uh, we also want to remind all the parents that we're registering your kids for the Easter program we enlarged that QR code a little bit. Some people said they couldn't scan it, Jessica, so we blew it up a little bit uh, there. So go ahead and scan that code there to get your kids signed up for uh, the Easter program on March the, the, the 10th. I'm sorry, sign up by March 10th. The Easter program on March 31st. Just talk to Trey. They got some exciting things they're going to be doing on that day. Uh, so make sure you get your kids signed up for that today. See, Jessica um, and uh, Renita or Daphne for more information on that if you need to get your kid signed up for that. You guys remember about three weeks ago, uh, we started a weight loss competition. Y'all, y'all remember that? Y'all, y'all, and you know if you weighed in now. Like, like it's Tom, and Tom, he's right there. Raise your hand. <laughs> y'all saw this man right here weighed in, so he got your original weight. So next Sunday we're gonna have a, the the final weigh in to see the progress you've made. Amen, somebody, in this house. Amen. It's <laughs> the, 
There is a cash prize for the first, second, and third place winner, so we're going to weigh in on March 10th. We will not take self-reported weight. So it's going to have to be the same scale that you weighed in on and the same scale you're going to weigh out on. <laughs> uh, so make sure you see Tony next Sunday. That's the only date uh, is next, next Sunday. Make sure you see him after service, after 11 o'clock service on next Sunday. Um, our Nehemiah Project is continuing. Uh, if you've been participating, give yourself a round of applause for the Nehemiah Project. Uh, those donations have been coming in. Of course, if you're new, this is a project campaign we have here uh, to help facilitate uh, the construction of some new projects that we have here. Uh, we have our uh, community development center, uh, has the doctor offices, we have a school, we have a new church. We got a whole bunch of stuff, you know, a whole bunch of stuff. But this is going to be the seed money for that to help get those off the ground. We're asking 30, uh, 300 individuals to give $100 a month. So make sure if you're giving cash out, you see at the top right there, cash out. Uh, also, you can find us on the app, find Nehemiah Project, and you can give. We had two people in the first service that give by check. I know we got one still here today. I'm going to turn this way. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so if you're giving by check, Make your checks out to the Next Step Community Development Center. Next Step Community Development Center, not greater faith. If you choose to give by check, we'll take that check too. That didn't go in your little register and fill it, you know. I guess that's how you still, I ain't written a check in so long on that. So we definitely do want to want to thank you for that. And also to for this and any other things happening here at the church, download our app. Download our app. If you don't have it, make sure you go ahead and download that right now. Uh, go into your app store or your Google Play store or wherever. Uh, find Church Center, Church Center, and then find our church there and download the app. We have our messages on there. Uh, you can give on there. You can request prayer, uh, sign up for Next Steps. You can do all that uh, on the app, right? And so he was out last Sunday, and there are a lot of people going around claiming to be Bishop David Evans. We got the real one with us today. We, got, <laughs> we don't have the impersonator. Come on, Bishop. I need another Sunday. I'm, I'm serious, man. I appreciate y'all allowing us to slip away. We went and stole us a Sunday and went to brunch and just sat by the window of this restaurant and just kind of reflect on life and talk. And, and we, I talked about y'all the whole time. My wife looked at me and said, what kind of date is this? <laughs> She said, we might as well went to church. <laughs> I did. I said, you, did you meet so-and-so, so-and-so? Nah, I ain't met so-and-so. I said, you met them. They came in with the two kids. And i uh, just so proud of y'all. Um, I'm grateful uh, to be a part of your life. And you wonder why I got this suit on. I was, <laughs> I think about y'all often. I said, man, I, I'm, I'm pastoring this family and this family. I said, shoot, I need to go in there and look like I'm somebody pastor today. And so I walked in. Don't laugh. I'm serious. I said it. I had it laid out since last Monday. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and I said, man, I want to go in here. And I wanted to represent y'all. And, and listen to me. You, knowing that I'm your pastor, it keeps me accountable to make sure that I'm just not in any and everything. Does that make sense, what I'm saying? And uh, we love y'all so much, and I thank you uh, for who you are in our life, and I thank you for you allowing me to love the way I want to love. That makes sense, what I'm saying? Some people won't. Listen, here's what I'm trying to say. I'm going to say it the ghetto way. Y'all so ghetto. <laughs> Some people won't let you be good to them. Some people, it don't matter how hard you try, they just won't let you be good to them. But you, you allow me to love you, and I appreciate it. I made up with two people this morning, and lo and behold, by the time I finish the first service, I'm back mad at one of them. <laughs> me and Mikhail, still, we still good, but that Frank. Frank, as soon as I walked out the day in between service, he did something that made me mad. And so me and Deacon Frank White, we mad at each other. But um, I, I want to tell y'all in front of him so that if anything go down between us, <laughs> y'all already know about it, okay? 
But I do want to commend him on a job well done, him and Brother Meggs and the, uh, the deacon ministry on blessing little Kaylin Cooper with her car on last week. Yes, indeed. Uh, I had little to nothing to do with that. All I did was spoke what was on my heart, and they went into action. Uh, we were at the restaurant, and my phone kept going. All people, people that didn't even go to the church was texting, talking about, uh, I heard y'all gave away a car. You know, and I'm texting back, well, I don't know. I'm not at church today, but it ain't beneath them to do something like that. They probably did. You know, that's how I send it back to them. You know, I don't never confirm nothing. But it was just going off and to see uh, little Kaylin blessed and driving to, to work uh, uh, on last week. I want to read a card uh, that she gave to uh, for me to read to you all. And you did this. Your giving, your generosity made this happen. She said, first off, I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Really, God is more than good. He blesses us in the most unexpected ways. And I'm so grateful for the way he blessed me. I'm always trying to do right, do the right things in life and live, uh, live to learn as well. I just want to keep that goodness and loving in me so I can spread it to everyone else and they can spread it to the next person and so on. So with that being said, I would love to give a big thanks to the deacons, greater faith members, and to the biggest, biggest thank you to you, Bishop. May God bless you all. Oh, I love you, Kaylin. Amen. Amen. And on the other side of the card, her mom said, I would like to say your generosity uh, was really appreciated. This is truly an example of how God operates. I am a believer that it is better to give than to receive. But with that being said, when you put out good, it comes back not only to you, but to those that are closest to you. Uh, God bless greater faith today, tomorrow, and forever. Love, Monica Cooper Turner, a.k.a. KK's mom. <clears throat> and... And, and, I, and I'm fired up. I'm going to be honest with you. I said it at 9 a.m. and I'm saying it to you. Uh, I want to be in position as a ministry, as a church, that nobody loses houses, cars, or nothing in here. That if we hear of a member and we can help or a non-member and we can help someone prevent them from save, losing their house or home, if, if necessary, if God speaks, then we come together and make something happen. Come on, say amen. Y'all quiet. I'm preaching already. And so I appreciate all of that you've done. The Nehemiah Project is very instrumental in this community. Our people suffer from health care. They suffer from education. And we're, we're strategic in this. And I know that we're growing and we're, we're pushing for a new sanctuary. We have one designed. But I can't do it without you. And I'm not going to do it without you. And I know everybody has their own situations. But God is looking for a group of people that will come together. And if we come together, he blesses it. Amen? So keep that in mind. Amen. Let's get ready to give. Those of you that are prepared to give, get your offering together. If you're giving electronically, you can give on one of these platforms here. You can go to the website, www.greaterfaithchurch.org. You can go to Cash App, dollar sign GFVWC1. You can text to give, 833-537-0213. Or you can give on GiveLify. Or if you're traditional and you still like to write your check out uh, behind the seat in front of you, I'm not going to look on that side. I'm going to look straight ahead. If you like my wife and you want to write that check, so she said, I want, I want, I want the Lord to see me write my check. Uh, there's an envelope in the seat in front of you, behind the seat in front of you. You can fill that envelope out and a connection card. And on your way up, please put the connection card uh, in the bucket so I can send you. I'm back off of my little sabbatical from mom, um, burying mom. And so... I get, I get all the connection cards, and I promise you, you will get a card from me if you fill out one today as a first-time visitor. Once you have it, grab your phone, grab your envelope. Come on, stand with me. We want to do our affirmation. We want to speak over our seed. Those of you, if, not, if you're not looking for a blessing, you don't have to say nothing. But if you're looking for God to bless you, you got children trying to go to college. You got things you're trying to do, home to buy, things to aspire of getting. Then I want you to repeat this declaration with us. Lift your phones, lift your envelopes all over the place. Repeat after me. This tithe, this seed qualifies me. I am a magnet for financial abundance and prosperity. Money flows to me effortlessly. And in abundance, I attract opportunities to create wealth and success in my life. 
I release any limiting belief about money and I embrace a mindset of abundance. I am deserving. I am deserving. I am deserving of financial freedom. And I use money wisely to create a positive impact in my life and the life of others. I am grateful to Jesus. I am grateful to Jesus. I'm grateful to Jesus for the abundance that surrounds me. And I attract wealth in every area of my life. Every day, in every way, I walk in prosperity. According to my inheritance, through my salvation, as a child of God. And if you believe it, say in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Left and right side of the church, starting from the rear of the church. Come on, put some step. Put some pep in your step and come on. Come on, if you're bringing envelopes, if you're tapping your phone. God bless you. Come on. All over the building. Come on. In the middle. In the middle. Starting at the rear. Here they come. Come on. probably since the conception and she moved away and still was very supportive of what we did and how God was moving and and we prayed that one day God would send her back and we're so thankful that she is back in the city of Tuscaloosa want to welcome to our service sister Mancita Minor and her mom is here today God bless you come on wave your hand so they can see you uh, that she's right there they look like twins you won't be able to tell mama look just as young Amen. God bless y'all. Thank y'all for sharing on today. Out of the book of Luke, y'all, I don't have that long. It is already 1130. Out of the book of Luke, uh, we were blessed by this morning service, and it won't take me long to get there. Luke 14, verses 16 through 24, Amplified Version puts it like this. Luke 14, 16, if you have your Bibles, Amplified. If not, it's up on the screen. Look what it says. But Jesus said to him, a man was giving a big dinner. And he invited many guests, and at the dinner hour, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, come, because everything is now ready. But they all alike begin to make excuses. Somebody say excuses. The first one said to him, I've purchased a piece of land, and I have to, have to go out and see it. Please consider me excused. Another one said, I've purchased five yoke of oxen, and I'm going to try them out. Please consider me excused. Another one said, I have recently married. I was married now. I was married. I married a wife. And for that reason, I am unable to come. So the servant came back and reported this to his master. Then his master, the head of the household, became angry at the rejections of his invitation and said to his servant, go out quickly into the streets, into the lanes of the city, and bring in here, somebody say in here, the poor and the disabled and the blind and the lame. And the servant after returning said, Sir, what you've commanded has been done and still, and still there is room. Then the master told the servant, go out into the highways along the hedges and compel them to come in so that my house may be filled. F-I-L-L-E-D. 
with guests. For I tell you, not one of those who were invited and declined will taste my dinner. Real short, real short in about 20 minutes or less, I want to get to the climax of this message. I want to talk to you on the heels of the series that we've been talking, The Kingdom in Me. And I want to label this message, it's up on the screen, This is How We Do It. And I know I saw a couple of head nods and y'all, if you're old enough, yeah, your mind, I know it, don't, don't give yourself away. Your mind went back to Montel Jordan. <laughs> I'm going to go over here, your mind. And though you want to hear the gospel, the tune in your head is still saying, this is how we, sha na 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 whoa ho 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 Somebody on this side, whoa. <laughs> this is how we do it. And so I want, to, I, want to, I want to use that topic to highlight what I believe is important, that there is a major difference when a church is being filled and not full. I, I know some of you may not get it because I got a lot of young people, college people here, and they're wondering what's the difference. There is a big difference, a major difference in a church being full and filled. Uh, yeah, they're, they're, a full house has nothing to do with a filled house. Yeah, uh, now post-pandemic, and I explained to him at 9 a.m., uh, a lot of pastors are trying to figure out how to get people back to church. Because they're looking at the quantity. They're looking at the numbers that they have sitting before them. And they're looking at the empty seats. And they're wondering how to get the house full. And I had to, rem Dexter, I had to remind a brother, a pastor last week, because he called and asked me. He said, man, what are you doing at your church to get so many people in there? I said, the focus is not on the quantity of people. Because it's on the quality that God brings to your church. I said, you're focusing on numbers when you need to understand that Jesus took 12 men and discipled a whole nation. 12 men he used to evangelize the lost and to bring in those that did not know God. He didn't have a thousand member church. He didn't have what we consider to be a mega church. He took 12 men and 12 men, all of them came from different walks of life. I'm going to hurt some religious folk in here. That he had a liar in the group, but he used him. He had a murderer in the group, but he used him. He had an extortioner in the group, but he used him. And we want to pick and choose over people. Elder Wallace, where you at? I think I saw you walked out. We want to pick and choose over people. We'll rather get those that give the most the position in the church. we rather give those who feel like and look like they ain't done nothing wrong in their life in the church. But can I tell you something? If you ain't have any past about you, I'm wondering if you got any all on you. I didn't say that at 9 a.m., but I got to say it right now. If you're sitting here and you're clapping your hands so cute because you perfect and you're sitting so upright because you've done nothing wrong, I need you to go back and get some oil and come back and visit. Because for those of us that have gone through some stuff, it took some crushing for us to get what we got out in our life. It took some anointing. We've been through some hard times. We've taken our licks. And so there is a major disconnect, Dr. Huff. There's a major disconnect in the kingdom between Christians and the community, between pastors and the people, between the saved and the unsaved. There's to the point, just to the point that people are trying to master what they call good church. Uh, they're trying to manufacture. Somebody say that, manufacture. They're trying to use man to factor a move of God. They think that if they dance just right, they think that if they run just right, they think that if they shout the whole service, that that's good church. 
But I need to get you to understand that the devil don't mind you shouting as long as you don't change. The devil don't mind you choreographing your step and you can run up there and hook arms with your friend. But as long as your steps don't lead you out of poverty, he ain't scared. As long as your steps don't lead you to do right, he's not worried about you. You can shout until you get holes in your stockings. You're not putting a black eye on the enemy. Let's hear this, that they want to master good church. And because they don't know the difference between a full house and a field house, people have been spoon-fed prophecies with no principles. I'm, I, I, I know... Uh, uh, God going to pay your bills. Off, all you got to do is stand up, spin around five times, snap your fingers three times on the right side. But he's giving you no principles on how you resolve your undisciplined nature about spending money. The Bible is clear on principles. We've allowed people to follow parking lot prophets. They wait till you get in the parking lot and then all of a sudden here they come with them spooky eyes telling you that God is getting ready to bless you. Well, duh, I know he's getting ready to bless me. He's in the blessing business. Tell me something new. I know things are about to change for me because things can't remain the same forever. Tell me something new. I know it's something great about me because God don't make no mess. Tell me something new. Parking lot prophets. With no fruit and no patterns. Get rich schemes and gimmicks, but no precepts for better living. Nobody sitting in classrooms don't want to come to managing God's money. Want God just to do it instantaneously. Pay off your Discover card because you done charged it up. But you don't understand you didn't charge it up overnight. Well, maybe you did, but you shouldn't have. But it's not going to take overnight for you to fix it. And sometimes God will let you keep walking around that mountain and won't let you see the promised land until you fix some things about you that when you get over to the promised land, come on, you won't lose what he's giving you. He has some things ahead of you that right now needs to teach you so that you can hold on to it. You're wondering why it hasn't changed yet. It's not that he don't want you to have it there's some principles and patterns and some precepts and some prayers that you need to be doing and applying to your life that when he gives you the promised land and you see the fruit that you'll know how to tend to the land the next season in your life is there anybody in here you know God wants you to have it but there's some disciplines that you got to learn and let me help you out there's some people that got to fall off so that when you get there they won't use you for your twenty dollars like they did last year I'm watching many churches, Brother Rodney, trying to manufacture a move of God. Maybe if we sing this certain song, maybe if we shout this certain way, we can frame God and get a visual of him that we can say God is with us in our worship experience. But I want to know, how can you frame God? When no man has looked God in the face and lived. How is it that God is moving so powerful in church? And someone has experienced a worshiping a, 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 a connection with God. And you have enough faculty to film it. Why is God moving? And the first thing we want to break out is our phones. If God is moving and somebody is being blessed. And cancer has the opportunity to dry up. And depression has the opportunity to leave someone's life. And financial abundance has an opportunity to invade their space. How is it that you have enough wherewithal to break out your phone and record that if God is in the neighborhood and he's at your neighbor down your row, maybe you ought to start shouting with him. 
Maybe you ought to start praising with them. If your neighbor gets up and start running, don't take out your phone. Talking about, look at that crazy fool right there. No, you need to put your phone down because they ain't running from something. They're running to something. And you might want to run with them. Break it out and we record it. And the only reason why we want to record it so we can put it on Facebook, put it on Instagram, and try to get the likes and the followers. Can I help y'all out a little bit? I wish we would just grow up and grow out of the likes and the follows. Because I, I ain't never been clicked up. I ain't never been the preacher that gets you to preach for me so I can come preach for you. I'm so cool by myself, man. I'm so cool with being in the McDonald line by myself. I can supersize my fries. I can get an extra large Dr. Pepper. I'm so cool sitting there by myself. We'll do it instead of emerging ourselves in his presence. His presence is where we want to be. Listen to me, y'all. If God ain't here, don't you come here. Y'all ain't going to have too many preachers say this. I'm almost ready to close. Listen, don't come to see me. No, come because God speaks to you here. That when you get here, it's just like God was listening in in your bedroom and gave it to your pastor. And you looking at your girlfriend, girl, he talking about me. He must have been in our conversation. He must have been sitting in our car. Don't come to see the preacher. Come because God is. Come because God is here. And for the moment, let me address this. Let me say this. I want his presence. No, y'all don't get that. I got to say that from the deep depths of my spirit. I want his presence. I, looking at you is great. Hugging you is great. But I came here because everything about my life is not peaches and cream. I understand now the older I get when David says I was glad. Lord, y'all help me. Hallelujah. I was glad when they said unto me. I don't think we understand the magnitude of what we're saying when we say that because it was custom that if they can make it to the house of God in spite of how bad their sin was, that if they can just make it to the altar, that their sins would be forgiven and that they would not be charged of a crime. And the longer I live, the more imperfect I realize lies I am that I need a savior in my life that I know that if I don't get to the house of God that somebody gonna try to point the finger at me somebody gonna try to bring up my dirt but if I can just make it to the presence of God what you think about me don't matter my forgiveness comes from God y'all ain't helping me it ought to be about 15 of y'all that your car is still in the drive position because you couldn't take time to put it in park that by the time you got out of it you start leaping you start running you start shouting because the devil knows what you had on Friday know what you said on Saturday but if you can get to the house am I talking to anybody I want his presence I want his presence because can't nobody testify for me did you hear what I just said? Okay, no, no, no. The praise team seemed good, but they can't testify for me. Come on, the preacher preached good, but he can't testify for me. Come on, it feels good to be in here. But listen, don't nobody know but me. What the Lord, come on, help me out. What the Lord has done for me. See, some of y'all ain't raised your hand, but let me talk to some of y'all that got secrets that only you and God know where you were. Only you and God know what you did. Come on, help me. Only you and God know what you thought. Only you and God that if it get out. Let me help y'all. You, some of y'all got some secrets. If you was to whisper it to your neighbor right now, they'll, they'll, they'll scoot on over. Am I, am, I, am I preaching to anybody in here? Am I talking to my church in here? 
Uh, see, I, I still got some folk that got their arms folded that if you were to if you were to whisper what only you and God know, they'll get up and throw up that Baptist finger and walk off from you just like. Can nobody testify for me? So don't don't if I bother you because I'm lifting my hands, please understand I done made it to the party. If I, if, I, if I sing too loud, please understand, I done made it to the party. And I'm in here to get myself together. I ain't in here to see who rolled with whoever. I ain't in here to see who's shacking with whoever. I ain't in here to find out who's whose baby daddy. I'm in here. Look at somebody say, I'm in here to get myself. I'm in here to, I'm here to get myself together. I'm in here. I'm in here. I'm in here. I'm not waving my hand. Because I think I'm more than you. I'm waving my hand because I'm a witness. I got a change coming. Did y'all hear what I just said? I'm waving my hand because I feel a change is happening in my life. Yeah, I'm testifying that he's using me. He's using me. The fact, the very fact that I'm in church. <laughs> I'm a preacher, whoever that is over there. Yeah, the fact that I'm in church lets you know that God got some power. Y'all didn't say y'all got about three of y'all clapping. And the fact that I even know one church song is a representation that God has some power. The fact that I got the microphone in my hand talking about the goodness of God is the fact that God has some power and there's an anointing on my life that the problems that I've been going through is only producing the oil on my life. Can you just do me a favor and rub up against the person next to you and say, that's for the hell you went through last week. Those are, that's for the people that looked you in your face and lied on you and you sat there and smiled in their face. Those for the people that you helped and then they turned around and talked about you. And all you did was smile at them. And looked and said, really, would you just rub up against... I'm coming, I'm coming, Tremaine, I'm coming. I'm coming. Yeah. It's the problems that do the crushing to produce it. And watch this. And people have done you wrong. Sat there and lied on you and lied to you. And not knowing the truth would have gotten them forgiven a lot faster. I heard you. I'm preaching to you right there. The truth would have had them forgiven a lot faster. And you sat there and you looking right at them knowing that they're not telling you the truth. And you're going in your mind because like, you can't say it because they're sitting in front of you. And you're going, I can't believe this joke going to sit right in my face. And grandma was saying, tell me that bold thing. <laughs> I think I read somebody's lips that grandmama said, I say that now. Nah. <laughs> and so you're in here. And it's not a mistake that you're in here. That, so for some of us, our problems ran us up in here. Uh -huh. But can I serve you notice? Your problems just ran out. And I see Dr. Huff done stood up. I'm ready to get in there now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when poverty ran into you, it done ran out. Come on, when divorce done ran into you, it done ran out. When bankruptcy done ran into you, come on, it done ran out. When generational curse done ran into you, it done ran out. Would you look at somebody and say, it stops with me. This is the last generation that cancer start killing my folk. This is the last generation that we rent a house forever. This is the last generation that we don't graduate from college. The devil done ran out when he done ran. In the Let me get to it. So here, good God, I got five minutes. Lord have mercy. Here it is in this text. In this text, Jesus is talking about a parable, but we've been dealing with parables. We've been dealing with parables. Here it is. He's talking about a text, and he's saying that he sent out, this master sends out this invitation. And this invitation is uh, uh, the master in this parable is God. 
And the messenger in here is the Holy Spirit. That God sent out an invitation using the Holy Spirit to invite certain people. And this is how religion was before Jesus came on the scene. That the Pharisees and Sadducees would use religion to ostracize people. And that the only people that have access to God was those, the keepers of the law. This is why you see Jesus dealing with all types of people from all walks of life in the middle of their mess. Is because he was showing them that this is not God's way. See, the Bible does not promote religion. Even though it's used by religion and used by denominations, God has no respect of his word. The Bible doesn't promote religion. What it does promote is prayers, prophecies, precepts, and principles. That if you keep God's prayers, prophecies, precepts, and principles, the word of God will work for you so much that when you live according to his word, it will allow you to spend eternity with him for the rest of your life. And it's not limited and it's not isolated to a particular religion. So the Pharisees and Sadducees was using the Bible to ostracize people from God by making these laws and rules that if you were caught in adultery, yeah, you were supposed to be stoned to death. This is why when they brought the woman to Jesus who was caught in the act of adultery. Now, I don't know how you get caught in the act of adultery unless you were set up and they were peeping in your window now. Nobody now. Yeah, <laughs> they, were peeping. they were peeping in her window and they caught her in order that they could prove Jesus wrong. And when they brought her to Jesus, Jesus started writing in the dirt. And it's something about him writing and dealing with dirt when you get caught in dirt. He uses dirt and he says he without sin cast the first stone. Now this ain't for everybody but if you've done nothing wrong then throw a stone. But if you got some wrong in your life I need you to put your rocks up. You don't have a right to throw a stone at anybody. And so here it is, he's using this parable that the master sends out this invitation and he says that he invited many, Elder Wallace, and so this many, when you think about it, will make you think he's talking about quantity, that there's a bunch of people that he's inviting. But when you read the text, he only gets three responses back. How is it that it can be many and he only gets three responses? It's because these three invitations that he's talking about will give you the quality of a magnitude of people. Let me show you what I'm talking about. The first invitation says, and, and verse uh, 18 says, but all of them begin to make excuses. He says, I, this one man says, I bought a field and I must go and see it. Please have me excuse. This person here that in quantity you would think that is one person. But in quality, he's representing a magnitude of a person that he understands by him buying a field. Look, people of God, he understands the, 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 the importance of ownership. That if you can get this type of person in your life. That this person understands the importance of owning. That you imagine that if you had 20 friends and all of them owned their own house. Can you imagine the impact that would have on you? That they will help you. They will convince you. They will mentor you. They will help, they, they will, they will help progress you. That listen, you need to buy your own house. You need to be able to own this. That God did not bring you here for you to be written and being somebody else's retirement fund. That in the kingdom of God, we should be owning everything. Do you hear what I'm saying? And this is what uh, churches are lacking, that they want this multitude of people as members in congregation that you don't need a multitude, you just need the right people. This person understands ownership and he says, please have me excuse. Verse 19, I'm rushing to my clothes. He says, another one says, I just bought five yoke of oxen and I'm on my way to try them out. Please excuse me. Number one, the person buys the field. He understands ownership. Number two, this person has five yoke of oxen. It's significant that he uses the number five because to plow one mule is hard. This is why the Bible talks about and it uses as a symbolism that to put your hands to the gospel plow and look back. You're not fit for the kingdom because if you're plowing and no, I never plowed no cotton field. No, I've never uh, plowed a garden. I know that it's hard to plow a straight line with your eyes behind you. 
that if you're moving forward in life, you can't keep trying to move forward and you're trying to look back. There's no wonder that your windshield is bigger. Come on here, then your rear view mirror. That God wants you more focused on you going forward than it is you going backwards. And so here it is. He says five yoke of oxen. Even Elisha was plowing 12 in his heart because this person represents somebody that knows how to do more than one thing at one time. This person is a multitasker. Let me help you out. Those of you that have businesses, those of you that have dreams, are you up late at night? Are you up early in the morning? Do you have multiple job opportunities where you are working a main job? Got to have a side hustle, doing multiple things, making multiple phone calls. Watch this, still going to the PTO meetings, still going to the baseball games, still going down and helping your child with your homework or doing this, and you're wondering where you get rest at. There is no rest. And watch this, and only by the grace of God that you are able to do all those things at the same time. Y'all ain't catch that right there. And we got some people, can I preach to you? We got some people that complain about the one thing they're doing, but they want what you have. They don't understand what it takes to be you every day. Ah, uh, you make it look good, but it ain't, it ain't easy at all. You're sitting there, some of y'all got two laptops open at the same time, answering emails, sending out text messages, trying to make the connection, helping a child with a, a, a college application at the same time you going back to school yourself you can't do one thing and expect a multiple blessings this person is a multitasker then the servant came back and then another person here's the third person first person is the field second person says I got oxen verse 20 and I'm coming in and says hey I's married now where my married folk at? Y'all help me close. Where my married people at? The brother, the brother said, look here. I done finally hooked shorty. I done put away all my dimes and I got one dollar in my pocket. I done got married and I haven't had the opportunity to consummate my marriage. It is only through the consummation that legitimizes the marriage. That through the shedding of blood and the consummation, the union and the covenant is now formed. And this man is saying, hey, look, you're my partner and everything. But I've been after her for a long time. And I can't come to your party. This type of person understands covenant. That when you give your word, you stand by it. Let me help y'all out. Some of us that have aspired and moved along in life, your word, we used to say back in the day, my word is my bond. Y'all ain't old enough to understand that. My word, when I say something, I mean what I say. And grandmama said, I say what I mean. We don't have people that say, y'all young folk, I know how y'all are standing on business. I'm standing on business. It's the same principle, the same concept that when I, I tell my son, listen here, I don't have a lot of money, but what I do have, I tell my son, what I do have is my name. Whatever you do, boy, don't you get out there and do something to mess up my name. Because with my name comes my word that when I say I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. This man understands covenant. And because he gave an excuse, the master of the house told the servant, I tell you what, get out there in the streets. Go get Ray Ray and Pookie. Bring them into the house of God. And when that wasn't enough, he said, hey, we still got room. And listen to me. Understand this, 
that it doesn't matter who God brings in here. Doesn't matter what walk of life they come from. There's room at the foot of the cross for them. We don't have the right to turn people around at the door because they don't look like us, dress like us, act like us. Y'all quiet on me. Or they don't live where we live at. Or you don't know what level of sin they did. Let me help you out. There is no level of sin. All. Oh, Come on, help me. All have sinned and come short. Well, I wish I can preach it like I feel it. He said, listen to me. People ask me, well, what you think about this? What you think about it? Ain't nothing I think about. The word of God is clear. The word of God is clear on fornication. The word of God is clear on adultery. The word of God is clear on, 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 on alcoholism, overindulging and drunkenness. The word of God is clear on homosexuality. But the word of God is also clear that all those that have sinned have a right to accept Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Y'all quiet on me. He says, I need you to go out there and grab them. I don't care if they smell like weed. I don't care if they smell like alcohol. I don't care if they got their purse on the left side. Go get them. And he did this. I'm done. I believe I'm done. He did this to show those who got their nose up in the air that you can't stop God's party. Did y'all hear what I just said? Oh, uh, yeah. You, 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 you can't stop God from loving his people. And, and I use an analogy. I, 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 can I use my analogy again? That let me find. Give me, give me anybody. Give me one person from the army. Come here. One person. You've been in the army. Come here. Don't be ashamed now. Oh, Lord have mercy, Deacon Brassfield. Lord have mercy. Come on, stand, stand right here, bro. Stand right there, face that way. Give me, uh, give me some, one person from the navy. Navy. Come on, come on, come on. You've been in the navy. Come on. Bless her heart. I'm closed. One person from the I know who that's going to be. Come on. One person from the Air Force. Army. The Navy. The Air Force. You, what, 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 you, what's, what's you? Army too? Uh, okay, well, you're going to take two of y'all then. Come on, y'all, yeah, y'all, y'all come together. Huh? The army, the navy, the air force, and the marine. That when trouble hits, the president of the United States send these group in. Isn't that right? And go ahead and walk it out, bro, Brassford. Go ahead and take a step forward. That they they're walking in the problems. You got the army. The Navy, the Air Force, and the Marines. But when he wanted to turn it around, turn around, the Marines are always first. <laughs> Y'all don't understand what I'm saying. Turn around again. Turn around again. I use the Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marine, but some of us, because we were the sinners and because we wasn't accepting, because we were the last in line and we were heading in the wrong direction and we prayed that God to turn it around. We prayed that God would turn our situation around. Y'all turn around. And God turned it around and what was last is now first. Can I talk to some people in here? That they counted you last. They thought that you weren't going to make it. They thought that God wouldn't turn it around. And now that you are the black sheep of the family. Now you're blessed and highly favored. You ought to high five your neighbor. It's your neighbor. I'm in this party. God done opened up the door for me. And this is how we do it. I'm going to praise God. I'm going to give God the glory. I'm going to give God the honor. Somebody say it. Stand on your feet. Many times we've been that last person. 
Many times people have counted us out. We didn't get the invitation. And I know we used to have that saying, if they didn't invite me, I ain't going. But let me tell you, the invitation you getting now, they're going to want to hook up with you. You've been last for too long. You've been talked about for too long. And you prayed to God to turn it around. And he's turned it around. And you're not last anymore. You're first. You're here. You're in the presence of God. And life is turning for you. Do you hear what I'm telling you? Life is turning for you. And what God is asking for from you right now, he's asking for your sacrifice. He's asking for you. He don't care about what you did. Thank y'all. He don't care about what you did. He don't care about where you've been. He don't care about what you're wrestling with. Those are laws and rules of this world. What he cares about now is that he's turning it around and that he's inviting you to the party. And as the singers are singing, I'm going to stand here. I'm not going to move. But if you want to give your life to God and you've been ostracized and you've been put aside and you haven't been accepted, don't walk out of here today and don't give God your life. Come on, come to this altar. Let us embrace you. Let us celebrate you. It's your party. We're here for you. We're clapping for you. We're cheering for you because Jesus Christ wants to be a part of your life. Come on, singers. Will you come? You're not saved. Come on. For all if you've been left aside, come on. Things you've done for me. It's open. Oh, I know one. It's open. Can worship you for me. Yeah. So here's my worship. Come on, mother. All come on, father. If you don't have a church home Receive and you want to connect, yes, come on. All of my worship is my worship. worship. All of my worship. Oh, come on. Here they come. Worship. Come on. Put your hands together. It's your party. My worship. It's your party. All of my All of my worship. Did not say. Here's my worship. Come on, All of my worship. Come on, brother. Brother, I'm waiting on you. Life is changing for you right now. All of my worship. Make your way out of that chair. Come out of that road. Come on. Come on. If you're in here, come on. And I will not be silent. They're still coming. Come on. That's right. Get your family together. Come on.
So let me do this because I know we're ready to go. Mancita is coming in, reconnecting with greater faith. She's making greater faith our home. We all give her a hand. This beautiful family here is joining greater faith and she wants to be rebaptized. She got baptized when she was younger and so she wants to rededicate her life and be baptized and along with this young lady wants to be baptized. This is grandmama and him so the whole family is being baptized. Y'all come on. Come on. This young lady is coming all the way from Demopolis, Alabama and joining the greater faith church and making this church her home. We celebrate you. This is your party. We're here excited about what God is doing in your life. And we embrace you. Come in. Make yourself at home. Listen, every seat at the table is a good seat enough for you. Amen. Nobody has no particular seat except that seat right there. That's her seat, okay? But you are at home. We love you. We want to take opportunity to meet you. My nephew is coming. He said he wants to get closer to God in his life. And he's been baptized when he was younger, but now he's a young man. He wants to be rebaptized, and so we want to baptize him. I love you so much, man. In the name of Jesus. And listen, God is moving because I know, I know the stock he come from. I know his family. His family loves the Lord, and for God to be moving in his heart like that, it's got to be him saying, "Hey, I'm well enough age to speak for myself, and I feel something happening, and I want to be a part of that." Okay. And so at the end of service, we're going to greet you and embrace you. Uh, we'll take you to the back and love on you and get to know you and send you on your way. For those of you all that are here, you may not have come here to the altar and made your decision, but you heard the voice of God standing at your seat and you made a decision at your seat to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. We honor that and we hope one day, one moment will come that you will come and let us celebrate with you. Until then, we accept your, 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 uh, your reception of Jesus Christ and we pray now that he will come into your life and change you. As you stand, as so as the mountains are round about Jerusalem, may God's blessing and prosperity be so round about you that no weapon formed against you shall prosper and any enemy, any tongue, any device, any scheme and plot of the enemy is now canceled in the matchless name of Jesus the Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Listen. Is Tracy here? I don't think I see Tracy. Okay, Yolanda has them. We're going to take them. God bless y'all. Y'all dismissed. We love you. See you right back here next Sunday.